okay <coughs> um, so this lecture we'll just finish up on dry docking and uh, then we'll go into something known as bilging which is i mean we'll come to that um, so let's fin uh, there are a couple of more problems and some more sections on um, this dry docking for instance let's finish this problem okay now you are told that <coughs> there is a vessel which is going to be dry docked and it has the following conditions its draft forward is 7.92 draft aft is 7 uh, 9.3 meters and uh, km0 is 11.43 kg0 is 10.90 MCTC is given, TPC is given, LCF is so much forward of AP, length is given, displacement is given. Now, in the dock, the depth of water initially is 10 meter. Uh, find the effective GM of the vessel after the water level has fallen by 1.2 meter in the dock. Okay? So, water level has fallen by 1.2 meter and then uh, you are asked a final draft that is the question okay now <coughs> um, the only slightly uh, uh, thing which you might not think of uh, in this problem the other thing is very much similar to a previous problems so like you find the g0 g1 change in gm um, and you have to find the final gm in this case also so there is only one uh, okay first of all uh, the you are given that the draft forward and aft are given so you know the initial trim okay then um, okay let's see this you are told that the depth is 10 meter and let's take the aft section okay because why do we take the aft section it's because aft is deeper means aft the draft is mo more it's always like that and in this case also it's like that so it's 9.3 meters therefore what do we see we see that there is a 0.7 meter clearance now um, the only mistake that will come i mean it comes obviously when you look at this when you do this problem will come is you are told that see the water level has fallen by 1.2 meter in the dock now one thing you might directly do, for instance, is that uh, the change in draft in that last, in the aft position, how much would you consider it? You might think, see, initially the depth is 10 meter and uh, this is 9.3 meter. Now, uh, so this is 10 meter and the ship, this draft is 9.3, there is 0.7 here. Now, if you hear some 1.2, it's dropped down by 1.2 meter. Now, the first direct way of thinking would be that you will suddenly think this 9.3 has dropped down by 1.2 therefore it will become something 8 point what 8.1 it will become you understand what i'm saying but it doesn't fall like that you understood the 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 that in the dock the water level is falling down okay you understood what, the, what i'm saying it's, it's a dry dock so what has happened there is water in it that is how a dry dock operates so initially there is water and what is done is some they have some uh, ballast and they are removing the water they have forced the water out and water level is falling so directly you might think that let's say if it is 9.3 initially the draft it will become 9.3 minus 1.2 okay but think of it see what will happen is actually when the water level falls actually the ship will come down okay you understood that so it will come down and this aft will hit the ground once it hits the ground then that is true whatever is remaining it will fall down therefore this 0.7 it will just come down just like that right therefore that at when it is at that time also draft is 9.3 it comes down like this its draft is still 9.3 it will come down and hit the ground and then it will decrease by what whatever is left 1.2 minus 0 0.7 0 0.5 it will decrease in fact that is only slightly uh, thing which you won't think of 
uh, other than that, then the, the problem is straightforward. Okay, so now we we have this clearance of 0.75. Now, therefore, we can we can say that the change of draft aft is equal to what? It's equal to 1.2 minus 0.7. It's equal to 0.5. So in, instead of just saying it's 1.2 meters, it actually is 0.5 meters. That that is the only trick in this problem. Um, so now you know that when you have um, when you have a ship sinking, the or ship sinking or trimming sh total totally, the total change of draft is given by change of draft aft. There is a formula. It is the sum total of the sinkage plus trim. Okay, that is the total change of draft. So, okay, just remember the some formulas like. Uh, you can go one by one. Like first, you have to remember this thing. Change that's trim. Trim is equal to moment uh, divided by MCTC. Okay, that moment producing trim divided by MCTC will give you the trim. Uh, then change of trim aft will be small l by capital L into that. Okay, into T. That will give you the change of trim aft. Now the change of draft aft will be this plus that weight by TPC. Okay. Just know which is what are the signs, that is all. Means if it is a weight added, if it is a weight removed, you have to make it plus or negative that you can think of you can so so the total change of draft aft is in this case P by TPC plus um, remember the trim itself is given by P into L by um, MCTC and therefore the change of trim aft will be L by L into that. So this is the expression for the change of draft aft due to I mean change of trim aft like there are a couple of things now there is a trim there is a, a trim aft then there is a parallel sinkage there is a change of draft aft okay trim draft tot, draft change of draft is a final thing which is the sum total of the change in trim plus um, plus sinkage yes okay so this will give you the change in draft aft now we know the change in draft aft it is given as 0.5 meter we have already calculated it so if you do that 0.5 you put this p you know tpc so tpc is known then L is the distance of the center of flotation that is also given. Length of the ship is given. P we do not know. Again, L is the length of the center of flotation. MCTC is given. So, MCTC you know, L you know, L, L you know. So, in this you solve for P. Okay. You will get P as some 358.2 tons. This gives you the um, reaction force from the uh, when it touches the ground. Now, the rest is actually very straightforward. That is, you can have. Um, you are asked to find your final GM. That is, final GM is always got by initial G0 M0 um, minus G0 G1. Okay, this will give you your final GM. Now, G0 M0 you will get by K M0 minus K G0. Or is it the other way around? K G0 K M0 minus K G0. Okay, that will give you your G M 0, G 0 M 0 minus G 0 G 1. Now, this you have the data K M 0 is given, K G 0 is given. So, that is straightforward. Now, G 0 G 1 there is a formula. We have already derived it. Here G 0 G 1 is the change in the um, change in the um, G or the change in the, met, uh, the metacentric height that is um, p into p you have just calculated k g 0 is known w is the displacement of the ship p is known so we know everything so you calculate g 0 g 1 and once you know this you get your final this g 0 m 0 this is your g 1 m 0 which is your final g m this is one of the questions of the problem this is one question then um, how can you find the 
if you are asked to find the final draft, final draft is always found by first you have to do when the final draft is asked you have to find the bodily sinkage first. Um, and uh, bodily oh it's bodily sinkage then um, you find the change of trim then you find the change of trim aft change of trim forward then you find that change of trim you add to the initial trim in the forward and backward direct in the aft and the forward it's always this method is always fixed okay when you are asked to find the final drafts this is the method I'll just write it down. First, find the bodily sinkage. Two, you find the change of trim. Change of trim is always the moment causing trim divided by MCTC. That changes according to the problem. Moment causing trim divided by MCTC. This is always the formula, but this changes according to the problem. It sometimes becomes W into D by MCTC, where W is the weight added at a point D from the center of rotation. It could be W that is shifted a distance D inside the ship itself from one point to another. We have done that is what. So, depending on the problem, that moment causing trim will change. But as long as you know what it is, it is okay. You just have to find the moment anyway. So, W into D by MCTC. In this case, it becomes P into L by MCTC. In fact, this is the only three types of problems are there. One is when a weight is added at some point, that point at which it is added, the distance from the center of flotation becomes D and W is a weight added. If it is removed, then it is bodily rise, it is just minus. Then the other possibility is a ballast or some fuel, we will say, is removed from, moved from one point, let us say compartment 1 to some compartment 3, from the aft of the ship to the forward of the ship like that. There the weight of the ballast moved is W and the distance through which it is moved is d that is w into d always the other third possibility is this p into l when this p force comes the reaction force from the ground comes so you have p into l l is again the distance between the aft perpendicular and the center of flotation so so this you find the change of trim and then once you find the change of trim you find the change of trim aft find the change of trim forward So, you find these two things. Now, aft is given by small l by capital L into total T like that. Then, um, okay. then uh, final draft will be uh, this bodily sinkage plus this change. Okay. The initial, initial trim you know it is given draft is this, this, your, your initial, initial, not trim, initial drafts are given, draft plus bodily sinkage plus or minus bodily sinkage plus or minus the trim and um, yeah, that is all, that is how you find the final draft of the ship if it is asked. Okay, then, um, okay, that is this problem. Then, now one problem is possible which is, it is also same, it is just slightly different that is it is like this um, that is in this problem instead of the ship coming and hitting at the aft perpendicular due to some damage condition the ship comes and hits somewhere in the middle okay so that is the only difference in the problem so it does not dry dock at the aft perpendicular but it dry docks at the some point in between and so the only difference becomes that um, that taking the distance from the center of flotation to find the moment, it is now no longer the distance to the aft perpendicular, it is the distance to that particular. In fact, that is the only difference, uh, we will just do it, but it, that is the only difference. So, uh, the problem is this. So, a vessel has been damaged forward and now it is going to be docked in the following condition. Uh, anyway, taking into account the effect of damage. Now, uh, you are told that. Um, water line inter intersects the forward perpendicular at 10.2 meters. It means that the draft forward is 10.2 meters and the draft aft is 9 meters. As you can see, this is a damaged condition. The draft forward in this case is greater than the aft. So, it is that is what it is not a normal condition. In general condition, you do not see like, like that. Always you will see the aft more than the forward. So, because of this condition, while it is, while you are trying to dry dock it, it hit the 
it says vessel touches the blocks 10 meter after forward perpendicular. So actually it hit the front part, not even the aft. It, it, it came and hit like this, it hit here first, okay. So that is the vessel touches the blocks 10 meter after forward perpendicular. Then the hydrostatic sum data are given KM0, KG0, MCTC, TPC, LCF, length, displacement. Uh, now you are asked the final GM when uh, the ship hits. So as you can see, the only difference in this problem, I am pretty sure you would have done this even if I, mean, I had I didn't done this because that is the only change. The only So you have to find an LB, the new distance LB which will be the distance between the center of flotation and the point at which the uh, ship hits the block. So in this case, some uh, let us see, you are given that um, LCF is 84 meter forward of half perpendicular. Actually distances are given in this case from the forward perpendicular means vessel is touch. So you need the length. So it will become like this length 176 minus the uh, let us see minus 84 will take you to the LCF minus 10 will give you the distance between LCF and the what, what is this? This is equal to 82. Now this is the distance between your center of flotation and your uh, point where the ship hits. Now therefore your trim in this case becomes P into this LB divided by MCTC. Okay. So you get your P which is equal to your trim into MCTC divided by LB. So you just do this, you will get your trim. Uh, it comes to 643.9 tons. It comes to this. Then, then the same. You can do it two ways. You can either calculate it G0, G1, or you can calculate your M0, M1, whichever way. In this case, if you do it this way, M0, M1 can be taken as P into KM0 divided by W, which is equal to your here 643 points, which is 654 into KM0 is given to be 11.25 divided by W, the displacement of the ship, 35,500 tons. Okay. So this will give you your uh, G0, M, I mean, this will give you your uh, M0, M1 and uh, you are given your initial GM, I believe. You are given KM and KG. So you know, um, so, um, Even though you do not need the initial portions of the course to do the last portions, but I do not think you can do any of these without remembering in the previous things, okay? because everything like if I ask you what in the previous problem we did, like uh, what is the writing moment at 1 degree heel, you, def you have to remember that it is delta into Gz, where delta into Gm sin phi. So every most of the important formulas are throughout the course that has to be remembered and what is TPC, what is MCTC, that and all we did long back. So all those things, all these formulas have to be remembered and even that is what, when you are uh, reviewing these things, also touch upon things like coefficients, block coefficient, prismatic coefficient, all because in this problem, instead of giving things like displacement, I, might, uh, I mean the problem might be just give CB, just to make sure you remember something from the previous section. Okay, So you should also know uh, the that's why all these fo important formulas should be remembered always plus the block coefficients all those and okay then um, gm so in this case you have your g0 m0 is given as km0 minus kg0 this you can calculate and your final g1 m0 becomes g0 m0 minus um, g0 m0 minus what did we get? M0, M1. Okay. There is a decrease in GM. This will give you uh, uh, 0.446 meter. So this is your new GM. Your G0, M0 was 0.65. In case you are confused whether to add or subtract, please remember that dry docking will only decrease the stability. It will never increase the stability. That means your GM should never increase. Okay. So I mean, if you do not remember the figure that G came, uh, G went up or M came down, whether it is going up or down, 
at any rate you should make sure that the stability only decreases during die rocking if you remember that you know that gm can only decrease and it as it keeps decreasing and when it becomes zero it becomes unstable okay so this will give you and the same thing if you are asked the final drafts same thing trim you find the change uh, trim aft trim forward uh, in this case bodily sinkage then you i think it's a bodily rise see uh, in this case remember it's not a bodily sinkage because uh, this p is actually up okay when it comes up it is up so it's going to be a bodily rise not a bodily sinkage actually in the previous problem also when you are doing p by tpc plus that p by tpc will become negative uh, let me see yeah it's subtracted so you have to just remember that that please remember p this is a bodily rise in this problem in dry docking and not sinkage okay so this kind of covers the section on dry docking so um, one small thing associated with dry docking is uh, a phenomenon which we call as grounding grounding is like an accidental dry docking means suppose that a ship is going in some shallow water and um, uh, you must have heard not tides you are, you know what is okay so, suppose suddenly the tide falls means the water level suddenly falls because of the tide change and the ship might end up hitting some rock below and means it'll just come down and hit some point it so you don't know what that point it it is so that it's like an accidental dry docking okay so it comes and hits there and it's uh, damage it causes damage to the ship and that phenomenon of um, it's really a phenomenon associated with damage of the ship that's called as grounding but grounding is used in many ways also in case a ship is damaged due to anything any process you call it grounding but really the word grounding stands for this process when it comes down hits some point um, in fact you will see a lot of if you just look at the internet itself like news you will see all the time uh, ship grounded near the um, some harbor gr ship grounded near the coast like that the meaning is this grounded means it's damaged and it's it struck somewhere so i'll just the definition i have just put here you can just read it ship grounding is a type of marine accident that involves the impact of a ship on the seabed damage on the which causes damage on the hull and on the bottom structure so it can cause damage and uh, it can affect the ship's stability and integrity uh, st structural uh, sound sound it, soundness it will affect that so the ship is no longer safe to be uh, uh, used and um, the reason is because it's such a heavy load suddenly comes on some point of the structure it causes structural damage i mean you are doing marine construction and building you can you have you'll have some idea of what will happen if some, something suddenly strikes so um, this is the grounding now this has um, now let us suppose that um, let us suppose that the sh here that equation what it says is that change of draft at c i have written c is actually by c we mean the point where the ship hits the point okay, ship hits the ground uh, that point is called c um, now at that point the change in draft at c will be i mean that is a common formula change of draft anywhere is given by this formula only change of trim at c dip plus that now um, in this particular case see in that pro in that the only thing which looks new here is that x okay this y is the change of draft at that point c and um, x is the distance of that point from the center of flotation so like we did the previous problem we saw what happens when the ship grounds at a point um, ship dry docks at a point which is not at the uh, at the aft perpendicular so the same thing that x is the distance from the um, from the center of flotation to the point to c means c is the point where it hits the um, ground or the whatever rock or something so this is the expression for the change of draft at sea um, now this problem will explain that is you can have um, see suppose you have a vessel floating at draft uh, forward 8.7 meter aft 9.4 meter 
it suddenly grounds uh, at a point 30 meter aft of the forward perpendicular and estimate the draft. So, the thing is here see estimate the draft of the vessel after the tide has fallen by 70 meter. What has happened is it has grounded due to some reason and then the tide is falling by 70 meter. The only thing you need to know here is see even though the tide has fallen by 70 meter you say you cannot say what is the change of draft at any point on the ship other than at that point where it is grounded. You see why that is because the ship is like this. Now, if the water level falls it can go here up or down like this. Therefore, you really cannot say what is the change of draft at any of these points. I mean this point, this, but this point you can say here it cannot go up or down. Therefore, if the water level falls by 70 centimeters, the change of draft at this point you know it can only be 70 centimeters, but at any other point you cannot say. You can calculate it using our formulas and all that change of trim, change of using those formulas, but you cannot say directly it is 70 meters, it, it is not 70 centimeters. Okay? It is like that previous problem again, you have to know slightly that the water level how it changes, okay? that is the only thing. At the C, at C, yes. At C, it will be initial draft minus 70 centimeters, exactly. So, but it is not true at any other point. At any other point, you have to consider the trim into account, okay? And uh, so, so that is all. The problem is actually the same as the previous problem. Now, in this case, you are told that, so what do we know? We are told that the draft of the vessel, um, we know that the change in the draft of the vessel at C, okay? change in the draft of the vessel at sea is 70 centimeter. We know that that is given because the tide has fallen by 70 centimeter. So, change in draft at sea is 70 centimeter and the change in draft at sea is given by the formula. Uh, the change in draft at sea is given by the formula bodily sinkage, bodily rise in this case bodily rise plus, so, uh, so this will be negative plus this thing, change of trim, change of trim at C. Okay. Now, change of draft at C is given in this problem 70 centimeter, that is equal to bodily rise which will be given by P divided by, we do not know P here, means we do not know what is the reaction from the ground here. So, P by TPC, TPC is known for the ship it is given from the problem and um, <coughs> plus change of trim, the only point is that we need to know where it is grounded, okay, that is given in the problem. The ship is grounded at a position 30 meter aft of the forward perpendicular, so that is given. So, you know what is X, okay, X is the distance between the center of flotation and the point where it is grounded. So, X divided by L. So, this is actually at that point change of draft at that x divided into total trim, total trim is given by p into x divided by mctc. So, that is all. So, uh, here we know x, we know the length of the ship, we know mctc, we know tpc, therefore your only problem comes to finding p. Okay? Therefore, we know now the uh, the bodily, the reaction force from the grounding at the point C um, due to this grounding and once you know P, we can find the change in GM by using the formula G0, G1 is equal to, what is it, P into uh, KG0 divided by uh, W minus P. So, this formula will give you G0, G1 uh, which is the uh, change in GM. Now, from this, you know G0, M0, uh, this we get from your previous expression Km0 minus Kg0. So, you get G, same formula G0, no G0, M0 minus G0, G1 will give you your G1, M0. So, you know your final GM. Now, um, so in this such a problem, you the only two things they will be interested in, one will be to find the GM that you have already calculated, the other will be to find the final drafts aft and forward. You know the draft at the C, okay? you need to find the draft aft and forward because of this. Okay? So, um, 
So, that is very simple again you you know what is the um, trim p into x by m c t c you can find the change of trim aft l by small l by capital L into uh, that trim t that will give you your uh, change of trim aft then similarly you can find the change of trim forward then you um, find the bodily sinkage or bodily rise so you so the initial you have you are told that it is floating a draft forward and aft so you know the initial drafts so initial draft plus bodily sinkage or in this case it will be minus so the bodily rise plus the final trim that's all so this will give you this problem of grounding okay so this is um, so we have more or less covered the section on dry docking and grounding grounding is dry docking only except that dry docking is done by us and grounding is an accidental process and dry docking is always done at the aft perpendicular if the ship is not damaged at any so it when a ship comes i mean the people will be able to see, we uh, will know if whether it is damaged or not most likely it might be damaged but if it is not heavily damaged it it will be floating by the it will be like the the stern side will be down and the forward side will be up in most cases so once you have that when the water level comes down most likely the aft perpendicular will touch the ground unless it is heavily damaged and it is like this in the as in the other problem then of course you it some other point will hit and it can be dry dock like that um, so this is the whole process of dry docking and now we will go into the next chapter uh, this is um, two words this i mean it's uh, uh, there are two names used to describe this process one is called as flooding or damaged actually there are three words to describe the process one is flooding is the word you call it damaged this is the new chapter okay i'm starting the new chapter so chapters it's uh, uh, okay that it's described either as because there are two books i am following right now one is this Behrens book and the other is that other book. Now, one book, the first book calls it flooding, this book calls it bilging, both are the same process. Um, some books call it damaged stability calculations, that is also the same thing. So, same thing is described as flooding processes. In When you study hydrostatics and stability, any book on that, you will see it described either as flooding process or as damaged stability calculations or as bilging calculations. So, three three things represent the same thing, um, all of which uh, the meaning is this as the <coughs> as the uh, the screen says that is um, let an empty this is as described by SOLAS uh, I do not know if you have I think I have said it, it, it actually stands for internet SOLAS means safety of life at sea that is SOLAS oh you, you have done in marine construction they have done a lot more yeah that maybe you have seen that see there there is something called as solas safety of life at sea they have a that's a convention actually started after the titanic disaster so they that's when they started 1915 or something they started and uh, in london and uh, now it's now it's a big regulatory uh, body it's called the international convention of safety at li of life at sea um, now what they say about flooding is like this let an empty compartment be hold um, well below the water line to such an extent that water may uh, flow freely into and out of the compartment a vessel hold in this way is said to be bilged so as the name itself suggests you have a big vessel okay and um, let's say that it's divided into some five compartments and suddenly some compartment either at the end somewhere it's developed a hole in it and that compartment is partially or fully filled with water and so that is why we call it flooding so it is flooded it is flooded with water and uh, now we calculate just because one section is whole that doesn't mean the ship has to sink there is no such thing okay but because see the compartments you know that they are watertight they won't they'll prevent water from entering it unless it's a very heavy break it's unlike like the titanic or something it, it's not going to sink as such so this will cause damage 
and water let let it keep sink coming in now what we do is uh, we do the calculations damage stability calculations and see um, what what is the stability of the ship in such a condition um, and we go as far as checking to see how many compartments can be hold before the ship sinks actually totally so this is the whole concept as in this chapter um, okay now some important things that is needed okay this I'll, I'll come to this later that is um, okay now, now before we go into the processes of doing the no let's wait this is this can wait for a time um, that is uh, before we go into the we ne need to know some terms um, the first thing is uh, the first term is okay bulkhead you know what is bulkhead you have done bulkheads uh, these are the we can call it compartment it's what uh, separates them compartments bulkheads are there uh, then um, there is a word that we one 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 word that we use is the floodable length the as the name itself suggests uh, floodable length means that um, it is the total length of the ship that can be flooded without the ship sinking okay that is the definition for floodable length that is what it means now also let us define something like this so what exactly ship length will it depend upon that length not breadth length length of the ship total length of the ship that can be flooded so we are looking at it if you are looking at the i mean if you have the total length of the ship like this then and it is divided into compartments we are seeing the total length that can be flooded or that can be broken or amount of uh, damage that can be uh, um well yes that is true actually let um well it is defined as the maximum length that can be flooded okay so let's see which yes it is the maximum length that can be it is true if it is flooded here it will be different from what is flooded here that is true so it is the maximum length that can be flooded which um that means you basically are taking the safest region that so that will be where you have the maximum length the more crucial regions you can have only lesser length that is true so it is the maximum length maximum length that can be flooded so there is now an, now another thing now um now suppose the ship is flooded by some method the um, the water line up to which the ship can go up without any uh, i mean it can go up safely the maximum water line up to which it can go up safely is known as a margin line somewhere here so the maximum height up to which it can go up this is the means the water line can um, come up to here and um, without the uh, without the ship completely sinking that this line therefore is known as a margin line um okay now another term that is used is this is this we need floodable length and one more thing is a word called permeability the word is used in many contexts uh, in this even in in this even in uh, naval architecture it is used many places permeable and in this particular uh, the meaning is uh, suppose that you have a compartment which has a volume v you know that there will be different things in the compartment therefore the amount of floodable volume is never v it's always less than v okay some volume less than v 
Therefore, we say that the uh, ratio of the floodable length to the actual volume of the compartment is called as permeability. So, the floodable length let us call it as V f. So, V is the uh, total volume of the compartment. Uh, this, vol this will include things, different things are kept like there will be different kinds of constructions in the room. So, that will reduce the floodable length. So, this ratio is a word called permeability. Um, in general and the word it is mu and the uh, usually when we talk about permeability, we are talking about volume permeability. Though of course, there are times when people have you people uh, when you read the literature, you will see surface permeability also means you are talking about surface area in the other, in that case, but mainly we talk about only volume permeability means the total volume that we cannot uh, we cannot be using means the total volume that we will not use for flooding. Okay, then now this problem now we will go into the calculation of the damage stability. Now, this calculation of damage stability, there are two main methods in which you can do it. Please remember these two methods because I mean at least the I mean name itself if you remember you will get an idea of how to do that problem and that name is very important at least, at least the name should be very important because people keep talking about it. This is an important section like if any of you take up a job in shipyard or anything, this is an important section because you will always be coming across damage any sh any all in fact that is what shipyards do most of the time. You are not going to be building ships all the time, you will be repairing ships only, you will be like damaged ships keep coming and so what you do is you need to know um, this damage stability calculations two methods they are very famous and in this section and so these two methods are usually defined as method of lost buoyancy. So, I am repeating please remember these two names and method of added weight. These are two ways in which you can calculate um, damage stability or flooding. Now, um, okay. now, when a ship first of all you have the ship suppose that some section is now um, damaged or some compartment is damaged. So, what happens water has entered into the compartment. Now, initially what do we have? We have uh, some weight of the ship, something inside the ship, lot of items inside the ship and this um, weight acts down and the volume, okay, the volume itself produces a buoyancy force upwards. Okay, that is how it is usually. Now, what happens? Uh, now, water has entered such that inside that the weight of water and the volume of the compartment gets cancelled out each other. Okay. Now, um, there are two ways in which we can solve this problem. When you have a ship, what we can do is that, um, see in that section the weight and the buoyancy are cancelled out each other. So, what you do is you assume that in the method of loss buoyancy, this is the first method, the other method we will describe later. Method of loss buoyancy, we assume that that section is really not a part of the ship anymore. Okay. So, when you do that, um, so because you sh initially that was a part of the ship and there was a buoyancy from that, now water is there, that water balanced the weight of the buoyancy from that section. Therefore, it is like that is no longer there, you can neglect it, the total that region is ne ne removed completely. So, the ship is now without that compartment, that is how you do proceed with the calculations. So, some things we can directly read, um, this is the method of loss buoyancy, you can say that the flooded compartment does not supply buoyancy. So, this is directly it, means it there is that part that is not part of the ship anymore. But one remember, uh, the weight of the structures in the ship does not change, that buoyancy is lost, that is all and weight of water is lost, means the weight of the water that is entered is cancelling the buoyancy, whatever is there in the ship is there, that means the weight is not, is it clear? Because this should be clear, what has happened is the sh weight ship is as such, there is no change, water has entered, water is cancelled out the buoyancy, therefore there is no more buoyancy of that part, 
water is an additional thing but whatever weight is there inside it remains as such the ship is not changed nothing is changed except that buoyancy from that section is lost so that is what it is so so what it says is that so the flooded compartment does not supply buoyancy now you can see that weight of the structures is still part of the displacement of the ship okay then um, as i'll go to d which it, that is that once you have so since the weight of the ship or the position of anything in the ship hasn't changed uh, what has happened is um, displacement remains same displacement of the ship is the same and center of gravity has not changed because none of the items in the ship we are changing so i mean this is this is in very nutshell i am putting the whole concept of uh, so all whole concept of loss buoyancy and added weight if you want you can take this down because it's not written this clearly in the book if just these are the important points of uh, loss buoyancy and added weight okay so this and then um since we assume that that compartment is no longer a part of the ship that water that has entered is also not a part of the ship so water is also not a part of the ship and buoyancy is not a part of the ship that much have cancelled out that is not a part of the ship therefore there is no such concept of free surface effect okay free surface effect is due to the free surface effect means due to the water that has entered that compartment remember when water enters the compartment some section will be you know what is free surface that uh, free surface will come and it when it goes slants up it will produce some change now when you yes and when you since this part is not considered part of the ship and that water is also not part of the ship free surface effect doesn't come into this calculations and um now the um so this is more or less the main points of added buoyancy actually when you will do some when we do uh, some problems and when we describe things detail it become it will become very clear because there always is a slight confusion in this uh, it but it's very straightforward really and um, <coughs> so this is the method of loss buoyancy we can just um therefore let's uh, look at this that is what we can say is that delta final which is the final displacement is equal to um one minute oh sorry this is added weight because i made because the displacement doesn't change in this so uh, i haven't explained added weight still um we'll just do the uh, loss buoyancy right now now um so um now um should i okay let's do this so initially we have delta 1 delta initial del initial is your um we'll do one thing let us take a very simple case like a box let's take a box like this and let us divide it into three compartments compartment 1 compartment 2 and compartment 3 let us suppose it has a draft of t initial t i i stands for t initial then it becomes okay t initial first then <coughs> now let us assume that this middle compartment gets flooded so c2 is okay this has a length l and it has a breadth b things actually become much more simply simple when you do these box shape things we can just like i all those things we can calculate very easily so we use this for the time being so we have length breadth and uh, draft ti so the initial displacement of the ship um is given by l b t i okay which is um l whatever you have your l b t i and your uh 
displacement the mass displacement or weight displacement is equal to rho into del i this will give you your you can call it delta i this is the weight of the ship now um, this is before the ship has flooded okay you are doing it two ways same thing i'll do it finally once the ship has flooded with um, method of we are doing the method of loss buoyancy um, loss buoyancy okay method of loss buoyancy so first we'll just what i'll we'll just describe the step you know all these steps but still i'll do this so delta i is known now i suppose i need to calculate the moment of inertia about the center line i is defined as i initial is equal to b cube l by 12 okay and the initial metacentric radius bm initial is equal to i initial divided by del initial so it is uh, i mean you know this because it's a box shape bar it should be b square by 12t 12ti so this will become uh, bm this will give you your bm initial and position of your center of buoyancy initially will be ti by 2 now your gm initially will be kb initially plus bm minus kg this will give you your initial gm uh, which will kb is t by 2 t is the draft t by 2 will give you your kb bm is got by i by del that will give you your i uh, bm and kg and kg will be um, kg in this case is just a half if we have not given the depth now well, i think the depth is also given probably uh, yes depth is also given and therefore um, what is this kg well actually they have written but kg is it is the half it is somewhere in between exactly in between now one more thing i'll just uh, we need to know here is um the writing moment in this in this condition the writing moment is given by mr equals uh, delta initial into gz okay which is equal to delta initial into gm sin phi or gm initial sin phi so this will give you your initial writing moment now our next purpose is once you consider the method of loss buoyancy what will be your um, all these things you start from del actually that i have already said del is the same we are not changing the we are not assuming that the weight of the ship has changed so delta is same then um, i i will change we will see that um, uh that is we have already said the now the next part problem is when this region is flooded okay this region is flooded means we assume this much is flooded and then we do the problem and see what are the final um all these things uh, finally we have to find the uh, writing moment in the case when we have to find gm and then the finally the writing moment when the um ship is flooded in one of the compartments now after we finish this method of loss buoyancy we'll we'll i'll start with the method of added weight and then we'll see that both these methods yield exactly the same result it's whatever you are doing it's the same thing you are doing so the same result you will get um okay now i think i'll stop here the next section is little long we'll do it in the next class mm -hmm.